We have a protest called Ahmadi Najad's Wall of Shame. And uh, very visually, as you've already mentioned, uh, we will display the 140 minors who currently wait on death row in Iran, as well as blown up pictures of women who've been stoned to death for adultery, um, political prisoners who've been detained, and um, the persecution of ethnic minorities. Uh, we'll have speakers speaking on their behalf. Nazanin, how old is the youngest juvenile on death row today? Do you know that? Well, there was, there's one girl, she's been in prison for the last 20-some um, years, and she was detained since she was 13 years old. Um, so uh, the range is in the, in, in the teenage years. And it's really not so much how old they are now, it's when they committed the crime, is that correct? Yes, um, based on the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights and the Charter of the Rights of the Child, it states that a country cannot or a person cannot execute a child who's committed an offense before the age of 18. And Iran is one of the signatories to these conventions. And now one of the posters you're holding, um, and we have pictures of, mm -hmm. shows another young girl, and I know you and I talked a few years ago, and she was on death row, and you were instrumental, by the way, she bears your name, her name is mm -hmm. Nazanin too, in saving her life. Would you say that was a turning point in wanting you to get involved and start the campaign that you've started? Yes, when we were able to free her, um, parents of other boys and girls were calling me saying, what about my son, what about my daughter? And so I felt it necessary to start an organization called StopChildExecutions.com and um, we're trying to put a permanent end to the situation of executions of minors. So what are they charged with, some of these young people? It's wide ranging, um, some for drug trafficking, um, a couple boys were executed because of homosexuality, um, some are alleged murders. And there was even one girl who was uh, sentenced to death and actually executed because of teaching Baha'i classes to Baha'i children. And in the case of Nazanin, um, she was actually uh, trying to defend herself against someone who was trying to rape her. Is that accurate? Yes, three men tried to rape her and her niece, and uh, she defended herself, stabbed one of the men, and uh, he died, so she was convicted of murder. And because she didn't have four male witnesses, um, she was ultimately sentenced to death because under Sharia law it said that you needed this to prove that it was an attempted rape. And human rights activists like yourself also take issue with the method of execution. Tell us about that. Well, normally it's a public hanging. Um, they're raised upon cranes very slowly, so it's not a quick um, method where the person is, is asphyxiated. Rather, it's a slow and painful death. Now, although Iran claims that they've halted these public executions, they're, they're still taking place, and they're still taking place behind um, you know, prison walls. And do you think this will honestly make a difference as far as Iran's policy goes with child executions? Or do you think this is more of a symbolic show to mm -hmm. show the world Iran must stop? I think every little bit helps. We've noticed in our Stop Child Executions campaign that every time we showcase a child on death row in the media or we put diplomatic pressure, they're the ones that are released in the end. Um, the ones that we don't know of are quickly executed. So by having this large demonstrations and having people support, it, it shames the government of Iran and, and makes them realize that the eyes of the world are watching. So we know it does make a difference, although I'm not saying that this protest alone will uh, stop uh, child executions altogether, but definitely it will raise awareness and raise awareness that President Ahmadinejad, who's speaking at the UN on the 23rd, does not represent the voices of the people.